compact SUVs have been really popular the past couple of years, and that's why Seat introduced the Arona back in 2017. That was a pretty good decision because the car has been their second best selling model in 2020 and they've already sold more than 350,000 Aronas. In this video I'm going to tell you all about the renewed 2022 Seat Arona. I'm going to talk you through the interior, the exterior and of course we're going to take it for a drive. All right, let's start off with the new design changes to the exterior of the car. You can recognize this renewed 2022 model by the new grille that it has and the new bumper that now has the spotlight fog lights integrated here in the front bumper. You can also see that the lower part of the bumper now has more aggressive styling, especially with the silver inserts here down below. And in the middle of the front part of the front bumper, you get this little plastic block that has all the sensors integrated for the self-help drive systems. You now also get these new headlights that are standard LED headlights. You can also get 17 and 18 inch wheels that are completely new. And if you're not familiar with this model, the Arona, this car is based on the Seat Ibiza, which is a compact hatchback from Seat. But of course, the main difference with that car is that the Arona is a bit more tough looking. You got this plastic protection around the wheel arches and also this plastic cladding down here below. And obviously they raised the ride height of the car. It's a bit more difficult to discover what they changed on the rear end of the car. You have to be a bit of an Arona expert. What you get is a new spoiler that's quite big and it runs all the way to the back and it has the same color as the roof. And this spoiler makes sure there's a little bit less air turbulence behind the car. You also get this new bumper and especially on this lower part you get this new diffuser that looks quite sporty. You could also say the same about these dual exhaust ports here, which also look quite sporty. But they are of course completely fake and made out of plastic. So yeah, not sure about that. You also got a new Arona logo here in the center of the trunk. It now has a handwritten font, which you've already seen on other Seat models. Then let's talk about the cargo space in this car, which is actually quite impressive. You get more than 400 liters here, which is more than you get in a Seat Ibiza, which doesn't sound that surprising. But that's also actually more than you get in a set Leon, which is the bigger brother of the set Ibiza. Of course, there are a number of tethering points here on either side here in the back. And you can also fold down the rear seats in 60-40 configuration. And as standard, you get this false floor that you can set in multiple levels. Getting into the rear seats is actually a bit of a tight fit. You have to really be careful to not hit your hat to the seat pillar. Uh, but when you're in, you're actually quite comfortable here. Uh, the car has plenty of headroom, even if you're a bit longer, um, 1 meter 80. And also got enough room for my knees and my legs here. And I can put my feet under the seat. Of course, the seat is in the same position as I would use it. Now, if I have to make a really long trip, like say to Spain, I would prefer to sit in the front, but it's actually not that bad here. And you also have to consider that probably only kids will sit here most of the time. You don't get an armrest here in the middle and also no USB ports down here. Which is a bit of a shame because like I said, a lot of kids will sit here and want to charge their phone or other devices. And this is in fact a pretty specked out car. So a bit of a shame that there are no USB ports here. You do get a third headrest here in the middle and also two lights here on top. In the interior, there are more changes than to the exterior of the car. You get an old fashioned key here and not some fancy starting button. So if you insert it here and start the infotainment system, we can see the biggest change and that is this infotainment screen. As standard, you get an 8.2 inch screen, but you can also get a 9.2 inch screen, which I have here. I really like this screen. It's a lot higher up than the previous screen in the Arona and it's also a lot faster. If you just click on the icon, it will instantly open, which is just very pleasant, especially when you're driving. And it really surprised me how fast the system is compared to the system that you get in a Cupra Born or Volkswagen ID3. Those are more expensive cars that are more advanced. They're electric cars with the latest gadgets and technology. But however, this system seems to work a lot faster and I much rather prefer this one over the system that you get in the ID3, 4, 5 or Cupra Born or Skoda Enyaq. Now there may be a reason for that because in the electric cars from the Volkswagen Group, you have to do everything on the infotainment system. So setting the temperature, the radio, or even turning on the heated seats. And in this car it's more basic and you also get a lot of physical buttons 
like for example down here below for the climate controls. Now again I much rather prefer this setup with a physical button for the climate control instead of controlling the temperature on the screen. Now of course you also get a bit of storage space in the interior. You get a small cubby down here where you can leave your phone and you can also charge your phone here because there are two USB-C ports. You get two cup holders here in the center and also a small cubby hole beneath the armrest. And if you have a little bit of money left to spend you can also get a digital gauge cluster behind the steering wheel that looks really sharp and I will tell you a bit more about that when we're gonna take a drive. You also get this new steering wheel that is covered in Napa leather. It looks pretty neat, it feels kind of nice and it has a flat bottom down here and a lot of buttons on the steering wheel as well. What is really nice overall in this interior that it has a lot more softer materials compared to the previous model which had a lot of hard plastics. There are some hard plastics in this car left like here on top uh, but down here below. This is soft, you get a soft armrest, you even get the soft cover uh, for the handbrake and get the soft top layer on the dashboard as well. All right, let's take it for a drive. All right, driving the new Arona. You can also get the travel assist uh, system on this car. You already may be familiar with that system because you can also get it on different other Volkswagen Group products like on Volkswagens and Skodas. And that's uh, the self-help driving system on this car. And that's actually why you get that little plastic box in front of the car on the lower part of the bumper because that has all the sensors integrated for that system and the travel assist system makes use of the adaptive cruise control system and the lane assist uh, system as well. Adaptive cruise control makes sure that the car keeps its distance to the car in front of you and the lane assist makes sure that the car keeps uh, within its lanes. It's a pretty good system, now, of course it's nothing like Tesla Autopilot but it gets the job done, especially on the highway. You can just sit back a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more comfortable and just do the car, most of the steering. Of course, you always have to pay attention and keep your hands on the steering wheel. And you can get the travel assist on uh, both the manual uh, car and also with the automatic. Then let's talk motor options. There's not a lot of motor options in a car like this, uh, which is kind of normal nowadays with the small compact SUVs. You can get a 1 liter 3 cylinder with either 95 or 110 horsepower or a 1.5 4 cylinder producing 150 horsepower. For transmissions you can get a 7 speed dual clutch automatic and can also get a 5 speed manual uh, which I have right here, the car I'm driving right now. As the 1 liter 3 cylinder uh, 95 horsepower engine made it to a 5 speed manual. I have to say 95 horsepower, it feels actually sufficient in this car. I don't feel myself wanting to have more power. Uh, of course, you can also get the version with 150 horsepower, which is probably a bit more fun than this car. But if you care more about fuel mileage, you're better off with this version. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour in this 95 horsepower version takes a little bit less than 11 seconds. I do have to say that the shift indicator in front of me does ask me to shift up quite early. Uh, of course, this is because of CO2 emissions and trying to keep the fuel mileage low. However, this car is actually pretty fun to drive. Of course, it is based on the Seat Ibiza, which is a fun car to drive. And although that the car is a little bit higher, this Arona, uh, it actually kind of feels the same as driving a Seat Ibiza. So that actually means that you don't find yourself wanting to shift up quite early because you can have a bit of fun if you ignore the shift indicator. Now obviously this is a compact family SUV, so it isn't all about sporty driving and I wouldn't call this a sporty car at all, but you can actually have some fun in the Arona if you want to. Visibility all around is pretty good. Uh, you don't get a sloping roof line in the back, so you can actually look out of the rear windows. The side mirrors are actually a little bit on the small side. This was actually the same with the previous generation of the Arona. They look kind of cool and sporty, uh, but they are a bit on the small side for my liking. And I do have to say that this new infotainment system is a big step up compared to the previous generation Arona. It just works a lot better. It's also more conveniently located here, a little bit higher up. Uh, and I find myself not having to take my eyes off the road. I can just look a little bit to the right and I can already see uh, like the navigation map or whatever I'm looking for on this screen. And like I said, you can also get the digital gauge cluster here in front of you. I would really opt to go for that if you have a little bit of money left to spend. Because, well, first of all, it looks really cool, especially in a car like this. Like, usually you couldn't get technology like that in a compact car like this. And now you can. And it just makes the whole car look a lot more modern, a lot cooler, and even a lot more pleasant to drive. Because you now even don't have to look at the screen here on the right side. Because you can just directly see the navigation map in front of you. You can control a lot of stuff on the screen in front of you uh, with the 
buttons on the steering wheel, uh, like uh, the radio stations, your music, like people you want to call if you get your phone connected to the infotainment system. And you can connect your phone with the infotainment system wirelessly with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.